yet. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> We're here. I'm sitting in front of High Plains. Um, it doesn't look so tall today, partially because the ground actually got higher. Um, all the storms and wind and stuff definitely swept some ground under it. And the problem's a little bit shorter. I can reach the start holds easier, so I know it's shorter. But it doesn't look so high. I'm ready. They feel really ready. I keep telling Jack that today's the day. There's nothing stopping me today except my strength. I'm gonna give it all I have. I'm not fishing out this time. And I know my strength is enough. I have no doubt in my mind I can do this. I'm ready. It's Monday. We came back home last night, empty handed. I didn't send this trip. Um, I expected to, I thought I would. I was pretty confident I would, and I didn't. So I failed. I cried a lot. I never stuck the crux, which is pretty big bummer because even coming away without sending, I had wanted to just stick that move once. Um, no, I didn't. I spent two months training specifically for High Plains Drifter. I focused mostly on my lock-off strength and my finger strength, as I expected these things to be the ones I needed the most. I stuck to my training plan, I got my sessions in, I did everything right. I didn't send my project, which means my training didn't work, right? Except it totally did. Despite not sending, I had two really big wins for my training. First was that the opening sequence felt so easy. I felt all the new strength that I have on the wall, the finger strength and lock-off strength. Except for my last few attempts when I was getting tired and I was getting a little sloppy, I never fell off that opening sequence and it felt like 100% confident for me. Like I could hit it every single time, which wasn't the case in the past. The second improvement and the really big one was that I wasn't scared at all. Honestly, this shocked me. I'm so used to being scared. Um, especially on a hard move, like a crux move at that height, I've always been scared. So to not feel it, like to not even have fear in the back of my mind when going for that move was so new, so shocking, and so gratifying. In the past, I, was, I wouldn't try it without a double layer of pads, and I was never able to commit to the move fully because I was scared. But this time I tried it several times with just a single layer and I committed. Like I went for the move, there, there was nothing, no fear in my head. All that fall practice I did for the last two months, super paid off. And even with other things that I kind of missed in my training, which I'll go into next, um, this made it all worth it. Because if I had walked away not having committed because I was scared, that would be the biggest disappointment. But I, I committed, I wasn't scared. And I didn't walk away having not tried, which I'm really proud of. I did the fall practice really well, but other parts of my training I sort of misdirected. I focused on training my lock-offs and my finger strength as I figured the crux move is this really big lock-off to a slopey hold. But it turned out the move is always going to be more dynamic and hitting it is going to be determined by your ability to latch the hold and keep your feet on instead of just your pure lock-off strength. And what I really struggled with was keeping my foot on and not bailing it through the move. So when choosing what to train, I misjudged what was actually holding me back from that move. I did drill committing with my feet during this training block, but only as a minor point, so it just wasn't enough. If I could do my training over again, I would choose to focus on committing to and latching big dead point moves like this. I would have been much more prepared if my body had the experience and the muscle memory from targeted training on this. So preparing for next time, that's what I'm gonna focus on. Despite all this, I do wanna emphasize that that even though I misdirected my effort, none of that training was a waste. Like I said before, I clearly felt the benefits on the wall. And I have no doubt that my improved finger strength and lock-off strength also benefited me on the crux move as I was able to pull up and reach it a little bit more statically so I wasn't 100% throwing. I say this because I think it's important to realize that you don't have to completely nail your training and get the focus 100% correct to still feel benefits and make progress off of it. I've never been good at pushing through discomfort and pain, and on day two, I was definitely feeling the discomfort and pain. We're back on day two. 
my skin hurts. We haven't been climbing outside on rock that's not smooth, like sandstone. So buttermilk was not nice to my skin. And on day two, both Jack and I were really feeling that. And I almost wanted to give up and just not try because it hurt so much. But I taped up, popped some ibuprofen, and pulled on. And I'm not quite there, but... I took a step towards committing when it hurts. I listened to a podcast by Power Company Climbing recently about effort. And one thing that really stuck out to me was what they called murder face and the difference between grabbing holds and grabbing holds. In fact, to continue giving good effort when the discomfort is hard to stomach, you might just have to put on what climber Troy Photo calls your murder face. Like grab a hold, ball up your fist, put your thumb around, and get really mad like you're going to punch someone. Yeah. Like really mad. Like I wish you had a video of how serious you just got when you're... Like when I say murder face, like you grab holds and then you grab holds. And uh, yeah, I was just over gripping everything as hard as I could and giving it everything I had. I'm not there yet, but on my last attempt on day two, I was like, it's my last one. We're going home. So... I might as well give it hell. I didn't quite give it hell. I ended up dropping off because I hit the right hand hold really bad and it was just slipping and I didn't commit to it. But I did push harder than I had previously. And I took a step, a small step towards committing when it sucks and learning what it means to climb like you want it. I feel like I didn't do a good job of climbing like I wanted it. And that's something that I, I need to learn. So that actually that last attempt taught me a lot about what it means to bear down, commit and go for it. Climb like you mean it. Because that, that kind of only happens when it's your last attempt, you're tired, you're in pain and it's like, well, it's now or never. So yeah, I'm disappointed, but I love the highs and lows. I love the ups and downs. I love going in confident and then leaving crying. I love how much I learn from failing because this experience taught me a lot. And what I've learned here is what's gonna get me to the top next time. And next time I'm in Bishop, I'm gonna be standing on top of High Plains Drifter. Hopefully you learned something from what I learned this weekend and you enjoyed this video.